Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the morning devotion. Conti we continue with the book of Jeremiah, chapter 35. So actually, chapter 34 and chapter 35, uh, 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 they are upside down in terms of the time chronology. I would like to emphasize it because some of you might find them very confusing. Confusing, The message of chapter 34 uh, was the incidents about Zedekiah. He's the last king of, uh, of the southern kingdom. But yet today, in the very first verse of chapter 35, is talking about the time of uh, Jehoiakim. And actually, so actually, he's the third king. He's the last third king of the kingdom, uh, of the southern kingdom. But so I believe that the author put chapter 34 and 5 together with the same message that. So because in chapter 34 and 5, uh, the focus was on the fate of uh, Judah. Yet, at the same time, God still gave people the opportunity to return to him in chapter th uh, 34 and 5. So yesterday, we talked about uh, uh, the issues of releasing the slaves. So that, is in, that was in the time of Zedekiah, King Zedekiah, as the, as the nation was uh, going to fall. And that's why all the owners will release all their slaves in order to cut down the expenses, while at the same time trying to um, to go according to the requirement for the slaves. But yet, after releasing all the slaves, um, they realized that actually that was not the time for the nations to fall yet. So that's why... Uh, by force, uh, they ask all the uh, all the slave servants to come back to the owners to work for them, and that's why God was very angry with all these people, uh, with all these owners. So you can see that the Jews at the Southern Kingdom, uh, they they uh, they failed to obey the words of the Lord. So in chapter 35, uh, it was a very critical, it was uh, also at a very critical moment of time, even though it has not come to the time of a uh, 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 falling yet. So in the time of Jehoiakim, he likes to draw closer uh, to Egypt. And finally, and Babylon realized that actually that's the, uh, that's the relationship between Egypt and Jerusalem. So that's why the king Nebuchadnezzar sends the troops to, uh, to circle around Jerusalem and to attack Jerusalem. But right at that moment of time, and God's people still got the chance to return to God and repent. And in this passage, God would like to use a very special tribe of people called Rechabites to showcase the disobedience and the non-faithfulness of the Israelites. Because God would like to make use of this uh, uh, Rechabites uh, to call the Israelites to stay faithful uh, to God. So today we need to ask ourselves whether uh, are, are we the Rechabites or are we the Israelites? So overcome the trial and to become the Rechabites, to, uh, to set apart ourselves like the Rechabites. The Rechabites are the nomadic tribes. So there, there's not many information about the Rechabites. So anyway, they were the descendants of Rechabites. So actually, uh, the Rechabites also come from Caleb's. So you can say that the distant age, uh, ancestors of, 
of a recognized uh, uh, Canaan. Uh, uh, so anyway, the Rechabites was not the Gentile uh, tribes, uh, um, but they are the nomadic tribes. And one of the one of the recognitions or the laws that they need to uh, observe was that they could not drink wine. One day, when uh, Jerusalem was in the battle. And then in verse 1, we are told that this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord during the reign of Jehoiakim. Go to the Rechabite family and invite them to come to one of the side rooms and the house of the Lord and give them wine to drink. So this is a God's message for Jeremiah. Uh, you need to give some wine to these, uh, to these people to drink. So where did they take the, uh, take the wine? They take the wine at the side rooms near the house of the Lord. And also in verse 3 that we are told that, uh, so according to verse 3, it means that all the leaders, uh, their sons, and also their brothers uh, also were also treated with the wine. So in other, wa- in other words, Jeremiah was uh, inviting uh, all the men of this tribe to drink wine. So that's why Jeremiah was very diligent to show hospitality to, uh, to Rechabites. So that's why in verse 5, then I set both full of wine and some cups before the men of the Rechabite family. Can you imagine that, for example, uh, Prophet Deborah uh, uh, asked every one of you to drink wine, and, uh, and, and, and also she prepared the very nice uh, utensils and bowls and cups to give you the wine. Are you going to receive the favor from Deborah, from, Pastor, uh, from Prophet Deborah? Or maybe Pastor Joshua said that, uh, please come to the church and I would like to treat you some wine. Would you say yes? Would you, would you say yes to them? But this kind of invitation to drink the wine, so the whole thing sounds uh, very holy, but actually it's a kind of trial of God for the Rechabites to see, to check whether they were really faithful to the word of God. But in this passage, we know that they passed the test. So the first session is uh, verse 1 to 11. Uh, that God's trial to the Rechabites. Verse 6. But they replied, We do not drink wine because our forefather Jonadab, son of Rechab, gave us this command. Neither you nor your descendants must ever drink wine. Verse 6. So now he mentioned the forefather Jonadab. So actually, he's the ancestors, the forefather, uh, 250 years ago. So he's a, a breaker in the time of Elisha. So who's Jonadab? Jonadab. So supposedly, uh, Rechabites and the Israel, Israelites got a very good relationship. And Jonadab was a very faithful one to God. But yet at that time, and Jezebel, but Jezebel worshipped the idols. So that's why God sent uh, Elijah uh, to destroy, uh, um, destroy the city. But before he could finish this mission, and Elijah took it up. And then Elisha anointed another king called uh, Jehu. And this king Jehu 
killed all the Jezebel, the families, members of Jezebels. So Jonathan heard of it, and he realized that uh, actually they could kill all these uh, the the the, uh, the bad people of uh, worshiping the idol. So that's why Jonadab said that I will I will go with a Jehu to kill all these uh, J- uh, Jezebel people. So they were just like the good buddies to kill all those people worshiping an uh, uh, idol because Jonadab was a person who showed fear for the Lord. So that's why he wanted to destroy all the powers of uh, Jezebel as well as all those uh, idols. So that's why more than 250 years ago, he told all the tribe people not to drink wine. So I guess uh, for us, for the brothers and sisters at 611, uh, it tastes like the vibe of um, Nazareth, as the Nazareth uh, were the people being set apart for the Lord. But in verse 7, it tells us some more thing. So there are some more commands, uh, five commands. Uh, do not drink wine. And verse 7, never build houses, never sow seed, never plant vineyards. And you must never have any of all these things. You must always live in tents. Then you live a long time in the land where you are nomads. So Jonadab asked all his uh, descendants not to be the city jealous. And instead, they need to stay a nomad. And they could not be the peasants of the farmers at the countryside. So that's why uh, jo- Jonadab asked them not to build houses, not to sow the seeds. So not to sow seeds means that they could not be the farmers. Uh, they could not plant vineyards either. So, you know, vineyards got the relationship with the wine. But the only thing you could do was to live in tents. And you need to live in tents. So actually, that's the meaning about all his commands. Uh, Why he could not sow the seeds. Uh, The Bible scholar speculates that because... uh, at that time, well, during that period of time, the Northern Kingdom uh, really worshipped the idol of Baal. So that's why the Israelites uh, uh, really surrendered themselves or bowed themselves to all those uh, gods and goddess of the weather and the climate. So that's why Jonadab would like to do something in to to the contrary of what the people did at that time. So that's why he will ask the people not to become uh, the farmers, just like what happened to them in the past. So the Rechabites actually got a very special role, to put it simply. So to put it simply, Jonadab did not want the Rechabites to, to settle down in a certain place. So the word settle down means that uh, uh, you can forget all the troubles and then you can relax and, uh, and stay at a certain place. But what will happen if you stay at a certain place? If you stay at a certain place for long, then you will be assimilated by the culture living there, by the culture of the people there. And that's the reason why the northern kingdom has fallen. So, you know, for the northern kingdom, they settled down at the, uh, at the canon, and that's why they became uh, uh, assimilated uh, t- uh, by the Gentiles. So that's why for the Rechabites, actually, they made the decision not to uh, stay close, not to uh, stay assimilated with the people of the Gentiles. And they would like they would not uh, they would not like to be assimilated to the culture of the Gentiles. So, but something very special within those uh, two hundred and fifty years, and God also tested 
also test uh, puts the uh, descendants of the Rechabites to the test, to the trials. But yes, the descendants of the Rechabites were still uh, were still very sober, and they knew that uh, they could not drink the wine because so once they took the wine, they would be like the rest of the people. So you can see that the Rechabites had all the way trying to set apart themselves for the Lord, which and this uh, and the Israelites could not do so. So today, when we come to this chapter. The meaning of setting our lives apart was to become the kingdom of God. And, and actually, that is the core message of uh, the book of Jeremiah, uh, the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, shall we take a look at verse 19 now? So John the Depp, son of Rechab, will never fail to have a man to serve me. The last verse. Because uh, the Rechabites uh, are really set apart themselves for the Lord, and they, even they were put to the trial, they still set apart themselves for the Lord. And that's why they could become the royal priesthood. So originally, it was intended to be a blessing to the house of David. And also in chapter 33, we were also told about the, uh, 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 the, uh, the Zion, that at the time as Zion, that God will restore the Israelites as the kingdom to serve God. So, you know, this group of people were not dressed properly, and uh, they, were in, they were in wrecks. And, and they would like to remind those people who serve God in the temple of the right way to serve God. And they would like to tell uh, them that uh, this is, look at us, and we are the right way to serve God. So today we also need to ask ourselves a question. Are we the person who set apart ourselves for the Lord? Especially for the Levites, for those who you are serving God. So we need to check whether we've been put to the trial about uh, setting apart ourselves or not. So you know that when we observe the Jewish festival, it means that we are, uh, we are setting apart ourselves for the Lord. For example, when the world exhorts uh, Christmas, we as the Levites and the God's people, we redeem, uh, we uh, atone for our sins, and we honor uh, the Feast of Tabernacle above uh, the Christmas. But today in chapter 35, and God gives us the scriptures that, that we are reminded that even though yeah, we have atoned for our sins. We still need to be very watchful uh, to check whether we are observing uh, the holy lives for the Lord. For example, we are working at the marketplace. Are we still following the culture of the world or following the culture of the Bible? Uh, in terms of our sex, in terms of our relationship issue, uh, do we uh, are we settled down? Are we settling down in this world? And that's why we never set the boundary in terms of our of our sexual relationship. Or are we assimilated by the culture of the world? And that's why our mindset had been changed. A uh, God called us to be Christians, but yet, but yet we did not respond, and we do, we do not have impact. So in chapter thirty-five, who is the one to have the greatest impact? So not the Levites, not the great peace serving in the kingdom of God, God the great impact. 
Actually, the whole kingdom of Israel has failed already. And instead, God chose a group of people who did not really dress very properly, uh, but they stay in Jerusalem, and God would like to use this group of people to help protect Jerusalem. So that's why the people at Jerusalem was wondering, how come there were this group of people of different ages going into Jerusalem? But actually, this group of people serve as a reminder to all about uh, those people who serve in the kingdom of God, especially as a reminder to the Israelites, who, uh, to remind them what does it mean by setting apart themselves for the Lord. And today, the Rechabites also serve as a reminder for us because over the 250 years, all the way they've been observing God, following God. So what about us? And let us uh, take a look at the second point. So, so verse 12 to verse 19. So uh, Jude, Judas uh, disobedience and the Rechabites obedience. Why do I use the word obedience? So you can count uh, how many times that the word uh, uh, obey appeared from verse 12 to 16. Uh, from verse 12 to 18. So you can find the word obey very often in every single verse. So that's why you can find the six, uh, uh, you can find the word obedience six times. So actually the word eight times appear, uh, the word obey appear eight times. So obedience is one of the significant topics in the Bible. Uh, obedience means uh, shema, and that's what uh, Jeremiah, that's what uh, Deuter Deuteronomy say in chapter six. When I count uh, uh, the word obedience, how come God did not choose uh, the Levites or the uh, the full time co workers to serve Him? Because why? Because at that time, all this religious system and uh, uh, has nothing to do, was uh, aimless already in that time. God still chose the people who is more willing to listen to him and more willing to obey him, and God chose them. And uh, in verse 18, there are three key verbs. There are three main verbs, obey, observe, and add. Obey, observe, and to add upon it. These are the three main key verbs. So God could see that the Rechabites were the very faithful and obedient tribes to the Lord. Uh, they listen, they obey, and they act upon it. And that's why God chose them and used them. Just like uh, verse 19 say, Jonadab, son of Rechab, will never fail to have a man to serve me. <coughs> but actually, in the previous chapters of the book of Jeremiah, and God would never use uh, the Levites anymore. And God would never use all those people chosen by him. Because why? Because uh, they are so stubborn, they never listened. So today we can see that a lot of uh, countries wanted to obey. So very often we want, we want to be chosen by the Lord to obey. I believe that we have a lot of our brothers and sisters who are so passionate for God. But today, God would like to remind every one of us that actually to obey is our greatest ministry to the Lord. 
Uh, so it is not necessarily about the blessings that you can receive uh, to become uh, the cell leaders or uh, be that you are the Bible school students or co-workers. We are not talking about doing some ministry. And instead, we need to understand that our greatest, uh, uh, greatest ministry is to obey God. So since God established his church and also established his authority, then do we truly understand everything that God has mentioned? And do we truly understand and take all the teaching of the, uh, uh, of the church? So as the Sukkot, I did ask some young people how much desire, how much passion for you to observe all these uh, Old Testament feasts. Uh, but you know that some people really enjoy the feast, observing the feast, but some people do not really like them because they do not really prefer a big group of people gathering together. So I, I also ask uh, some of my cell, mem uh, cell members, they are so young, I also ask them how much they could embrace the church but most of them say, well, it's only so-so. So you need to sound very excited and very positive. But by the time I talked to them, I also thought about something. How excited uh, we are when we come to the Sukkot. Uh, do we realize that Sukkot was one of the biggest uh, festivals in the Bible? And we needed to understand how come God would like us to observe the feast. So you can tell that, well, by the time that you can tell that uh, it is very important to observe uh, the Sukkot, then you will not stay cold anymore because he could hear the voice of the Lord. And that's why he could comply with all he said easily. Actually, I asked myself a question. So when the church is so excited about, uh, uh, about the Sukkot, so I'm talking about the flow of the church. So my question is, how much do you embrace uh, what the church has been teaching us? Even though there is a gap among every one of us, this is not a big issue. But yet we need to stay aligned with God. How, how would God uh, see the teaching of the church? Why God did not talk about any uh, eastness, removing the east, and how come God did not mention about the east anymore? Actually, we are scheduled, we are supposedly to listen to the will of God. When he say no, then we say no. Then we will not be assimilated by the church. Today, God, uh, we can see uh, those people being used by the Lord. They've got the impact. First of all, they obey. And besides, when the Rechabites enter the Jerusalem, God still used the Rechabites to talk to the uh, high priest. Uh, they, they talk on behalf of the Rechabites. So actually, our impact in our lives depends on how many people that we would like to listen to our friend or to the people who are in charge over us. So that's why today we should learn from Rechabites, be it in the family or in the ministry. We might be subject to the influence of all these impacts. 
But yet when we listen to God's instructions, then God will choose you uh, to release all his uh, uh, worries, uh, to release all his uh, grace to the world. Let us really stand up to worship God. So brothers and sisters, let us stand up. Let us honor our God together and in our lives that he is our only God. And that's why we need to listen. We need to listen to the words of God, listen to God's teaching as well. Yes, Lord, we come before you. We pray that we would like to use our lives to follow you. Faithfulness, we'd like to listen to you and love you. So, Lord, please help us. Help us so to, uh, to uh, stay focused on you. Yes, Lord, you are the only God in our lives.
Lord, we would like to tell you that we love you. That today, and God says, and in verse 10 and 11, say, God puts the Rechabites to the trial, said in their lives they could not build their house, they could not sow the seeds, they could not uh, plant a vineyard. So in their lives, uh, there, there, were a, there, are, there were a lot of trials. So now you can pair up and share what kind of tests are you facing right now? So now you can pair up and share what kind of tests are you facing now? Maybe there are two aspects. First, uh, what kind of test that you are facing now? What kind of hardship that you are facing now? The second thing is, so what, uh, so what are the things in our lives being drawn uh, to the world? What aspects of our lives are being drawn to the world? Two, two parts. One part is about our hardship that we are facing, or, or maybe the hardship or the testing that we are facing now. The second part is about the areas that we are drawn by the world. So for the brothers and sisters online, uh, then you can also... I share with your family members about what kind of a testing that you are facing right now. Maybe it's about the finance, the health. And the second thing is about what are the biggest things in this world really tempting you. So after the sharing, you can pray for one another and um, pray for the needs of one another. So you have to know that you are not lonely, even when you face uh, your hardship and the trials. So you know that by depending on God, then you are strengthened to overcome all your problems and difficulties.
Lord, we come before you. We would like to tell you that we are in need of you. We need your salvation and your mercy and your help. And today we come before you, that we come together in unity to call upon you. Lord, you know that we've got a very big financial problems. So, Lord, please extend your hands uh, to us and help us to deliver us from this uh, financial darkness. Also, in terms of health, uh, we got a sickness. We got witnesses as well. And some of our family members are, are very sick as well. So, Lord, may you heal every one of us as well as all our family family members as well. So, Lord Father, we pray that you save us, rescue us. So we know that by depending on you that we are more than an overcomer. And by depending on you that we will be comforted and we will get the victory. And so, Lord, for sure, we put our faith in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, we also pray for all the brothers and sisters online and on site. For those who are brothers and sisters who are facing the trials, so whatever trials that we are facing now might be different, but some of us, uh, some of us might have the loss of eyes, some of us might have the loss of desires, some of us might have the, peop, uh, the financial issues, some of us are addicted to work, some of us uh, would, li would strive for success, would like to climb up the career ladder, so every one of us are, 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 is different. So we all come before you. We, so Lord Father, we all come before you and please give us the grace and give us uh, the grace of victory. Give us the grace of setting apart ourselves, our lives for you. So Lord, may your pierced hands continue to guide every one of us to come out of all our darkest moments and the darkest parts of our lives. So now I would like to invite all of you that you are serving the church. You might be the full-time co-workers. Uh, you might be the cell group leaders, or maybe you are the Bible school students. If you are serving God, you are serving God here right now, you can stand up. I praise the Lord. So now I would like all of you, uh, you are standing, you pray for yourself. Uh, tell God that I need to set apart my life for the Lord. If I'm still under the temptation of the world, then I will bring uh, the way of the world into, into my lives, into our lives, into our cell groups, and into our ministry. So we need to make the determination to lead a life setting apart for the Lord. If we do not have the right mindset, then we will not have the, uh, the right action accordingly. So now I would like to, so for the brothers and sisters, you are sitting. You can pray for all those brothers and sisters who are standing because they are serving God in the church. Help them uh, to overcome all the trials and temptations in their lives because none of us can boast of ourselves. So that's why we need all the intercession from um, of uh, one another. Uh, for those who are online, for those who are online, so please also pray for all those brothers and sisters who are serving God, and uh, all the co-workers, all the Bible school students, and uh, the cell group leaders. Please pray for yourself as well. Yes, Lord, we come before you. Uh, yes, Lord, every one of us standing here, we all come before you. We surrender to you. We run to you, not running to the world. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord, while we are standing before you as the servants of God, as the one who's serving you in the kingdom of God, we would like to set apart our lives for you. We set apart our eyes, our mouths, and for you. May your spirit continue to fill our lives by your grace every time. When we face the trials and temptations, that we can depend on you. Uh, that we also make the determination to lead a holy life. That we、uh, make the determination to run into the lights of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, in this chapter, God will choose those people who set apart their lives for the Lord. And verse eighteen,、uh, you have obeyed the commands of your forefather Jonadab and have followed all his instructions and have done everything he he ordered. So Jonadab. So Jonadab, son of Rechab, will never fail to have a man to serve me. I believe that all of us、uh, would like God to use us, and God choose、uh, the Rechabites because、uh, they are obedient and they are faithful to God, and that's why God chose them.、Uh, God really valued the,、uh, the Rechabites because they are faithful and they、uh, they were obedient. So, brothers and sisters, what about us? Have we ever、uh, got the chance that、uh, we don't want to obey the instructions of our authorities or of our、uh, cell leaders or even our spouse? So, right now, take a moment of time to reflect.、Uh, if there's any areas of our lives that I fail to listen, for example, my my wife always、uh, nag at me. That I need to sleep earlier, but because、uh, you know, because I didn't want to listen, and that's why now I find that my health、uh, is not as strong as before. So, brothers and sisters, maybe we can、uh, use a moment of time to see to check whether、uh, if there are any areas of our lives that we fail to obey God, that we fail to obey the instructions or to obey、um, uh, the reminders. So, dear Lord, we give thanks to you. We welcome the Holy Spirit into our midst right now. Very often, we have the head knowledge、uh, for the spouse,、uh, the friends, the authorities, or our beloved family members. Yes, whenever they give us some advice,、uh, some good ideas out of their love. Yes, we know that、uh, with our head knowledge. But yet, but yet,、uh, we fail to listen、uh, to our hearts, and we fail to act upon them. So, Lord, please, Holy Spirit, come upon us and show us why we fail to listen and to fail to act upon them. While if we truly understand that the advice is good, if we truly understand that they do all these things out of their love for us, then how come I still fail to listen? How come I still fail to obey? Let us really examine our hearts to see why. Very often I fail to to listen. I will become very angry. I will show my. I will pull my long face. I will answer back. Yeah, Holy Spirit, remind me again. Remind us again. What's the root cause of all this、uh, disobedience?
uh, we just don't want uh, to come before you and say it very to uh, uh, to say it very simply. Oh yeah, sorry God, I'm disobedient. No, not just like that. And instead, we need to uh, dig deeper in our lives to understand why. Why? What's the root cause of our disobedience to the law? If not, we will. It's very hard for us to have the tr- life transformation to change our our mindset. We can pray for ourselves and confess our sins to the Lord. If you are daring enough, if you are willing, you can turn to the one who loved you so much. And usually whenever he or she uh, uh, give you uh, some advice and you know that he or she give you the advice out of love and then now uh, you can go to him or her to apologize uh, because you fail to listen to, uh, to his or her advice. And then you say to him or her that please don't give up on me. Uh, so please don't give up on me. Uh, please don't. Please don't let me to let you down. We can pray to God right now. We can confess our sins uh, to the Lord, while at the same time we can apologize to people as well. Shall we close our eyes? Let the Spirit of the Lord continue to minister to us. Dear Lord Jesus, we come before you. I surrender myself as well as all the brothers and sisters here to you, to the throne of God. Yes, dear Holy Spirit, so in your light, that we would like to tell you in unity that 
Please forgive our sins. Forgive all our pride and our self-righteousness. Yes, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us that we always uh, sh uh, pull our long face. Forgive us. Forgive us that we do not have the listening ears. Forgive us that we always find a lot of excuses for ourselves. Forgive us, Lord. We always think that we are the right one. We are the correct one. All the mistakes goes to other people. Lord, please forgive all our self-righteousness, our, our, our self-satisfaction. Uh, please forgive us our mindsets of... Uh, um, uh, how to say, complacency. So we love to stay complacent. So say, I don't want to change, so that's why I don't want to listen to your advice or your guidance. So, Father Lord, um, all of us come before you, Abba Father. All of us come before you, Abba Father. Please help us. Help us to stay humble before you that we are willing to listen to you. Yes, open our hearts and open our eyes to see your heart as well as to see, to understand the love of the people who would like to give us the advice. Yes, Lord, we... Yes, Lord, whenever we listen, whenever some people would like to give us the advice, we need to give thanks to God for that. Uh, we should not be too picky. We should not be too negative. Uh, thinking that when people giving you the advice, it means that he or she find fault with you. No, we should not think in this way. Yes, dear Father, shall we come before you? Please help us that we can have the humble hearts like Jesus. That we believe that all those people who come into our lives and who wants to give us the advice, uh, they do it out of their love for us and out of the good for us as well. So let us be willing to humble ourselves and be willing to listen to all this advice. And that let us choose to believe that the people do it just for the sake of us. So Lord, please help us. Please help us, Lord. Yes, do it, Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ that we bless all the brothers and sisters here that in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to bless you that, that the early this morning uh, that your heart is circumcised, that your heart is uh, set apart for the Lord and your mindset and your eyes and your mouths and then your... Uh, uh, your lifestyle, everything should be consecrated, uh, so should be consecrated for the Lord. So every moment of every moment of your life, that you know how to run to God, how to depend on God, how to seek God, uh, to seek God's face, to seek God's will. That again and again, when you face all the trials and temptations, when you seek God, then you will gain the victory and you will become more than an a overcomer. And I bless all of you that, that you are the person who is willing to listen to the word of God, that you are teachable, that you, uh, that you need to be willing to listen, that you are willing to uh, take the advice and the words of the authority of your spouse and of your beloved friends and family members. So every time when we are willing to do so, that we are testifying that, that we are testifying to God that we are the purpose, persons who are willing to listen. Let us uh, stay away from this world. Let's stay away from this world. We are in this world, but we do not belong to this world. And let us uh, really surrender to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and uh, um, obedient to the word of God and the guidance of the words of God and all the godly advice. Uh, because of the faithfulness and your obedience, your spiritual offspring and your biological offsprings, uh, 
Your descendants will stand before the Lord and to serve God and to love God and to show fear for the Lord and to follow God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you that. That your lives, that your time is always being blessed by the Lord until the time the Lord Jesus Christ returns. Bless all of you.